I've recently noticed a surge in 80s styled racers and it left me in a quandary as to which one to buy. So rather than sit and deliberate I went and bought all 7 of them which might sound extravagant but then I wouldn't have been able to make this video if not. To be honest none of them are that expensive, although some are definitely worthy of your time. I'll begin with my 1980s dashboard. I didn't even know this existed until I started searching for the other games but I'm glad I found it. Remember the Tomy Turbo dashboard? Of course you do. Or Tomy Racing Turbo or Turning Turbo dashboard? I don't know why it has so many names. Well, do you remember that guy who hacked his to run Outrun? That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Well, here's the next best thing. It's a video game representation of the Turbo dashboard. And at £1.70, it's pretty darn good. There isn't much to the game, you don't even get to control the gear stick. Your controls are limited to accelerate, brake, left and right. It's the kind of game you can play whilst holding a cup of coffee, but you may find that coffee goes cold because it's pretty addictive. The controls are responsive and the collision detection, for the most part, is spot on. So you find yourself just driving, nipping in tight gaps, driving, occasionally crashing, but mostly driving. Even when you do crash, you recover pretty quick, so it's not a jarring experience. You can even dispense with the Turbo Dashboard mock-up and play this thing full screen, which you'll probably do after getting bored of squinting at a tiny racing window. Next is Razertron 2000, again similar to a toy, the Digital Derby Auto Raceway, but vastly updated for modern day. Now this is also quite an addictive one, here we take control of a car, collect fuel and avoid other motorists in a bid to see how far you can progress. It actually reminds me a lot of the car sections on Ghostbusters. You can change cars, which also changes neon colouring, and other than that, you just drive. It's not going to occupy you for weeks, but it provides another serving of cheap, casual, 80s inspired gameplay and music to get your aesthetic flowing. Which brings me on to Neon Drive, a slightly more expensive affair which combines top-down and third-person perspectives to offer its own take on the driving genre. Now, from the go, this is filled with neon aesthetic. It's practically pouring the 80s onto your desk, but we can forgive its faux pas because it's aware of it and it bloody loves it. Again, we're in a world of avoidance, although this time the avoidance is more ordered into an endless runner world of static blocks. Although we have a vehicle present, it's not really a racer, and it would be easy enough to replace the car with anything else and still have an agreeable game. But the fact it is a car, an 80s styled car, makes this game worthy of inspection, as do the perspective changes, which brings a flow of fixed lane oncoming traffic for you to contend with. All in all, it's a good concept, offering the most engrossing and addictive experience we've seen so far, although the later levels can be pretty hard. On the face of it, OutDrive's aesthetic is very similar to Neon Drive, but this is a much more traditional driving game. I say traditional, but then the story is anything but. Having been present as your girlfriend is shot, apparently your only choice is to plug her heart into the car's engine to sustain her. Yeah, pretty standard. So the driving here has no goal except to keep your girlfriend alive for as long as possible. You'd think that finding a hospital might be a better goal, but no, our task is just to drive and keep driving and driving it doesn't really end. Keeping your girlfriend alive involves keeping the car speed up by using boosts, but not too high as to overheat the engine and kill your passenger, clearly she's quite fussy. 
Occasionally a gunship will fly down attempting to disrupt proceedings, but it's really quite easy. I played it for about half an hour before I pressed the wrong button, which reset the game, and really that's the biggest risk here, pressing the wrong button. Otherwise it's plain sailing, it really is quite plain. I mean it looks and sounds great, so if you can get off on that and find driving endlessly relaxing then knock yourself out, otherwise maybe move on to the next. Just to break things up, let's have a motorbike game, one which takes its cues from Super Hang On, and then add some slightly bubbly aesthetic to create a game which looks a bit weird if I'm honest, but plays okay. Super Night Riders is the name and Super Night Riding is its game, along with day riding and evening riding and all that. Now this is quite an enjoyable experience, we've got some goals again, we've got NPCs riding about, but we also have an incredibly jolting slowdown if we hit any other pesky bikers. It's upsetting. I mean, once you get in the flow of a game, you can avoid collisions for the most part, but there's always going to be that one getting in your way, ruining your day. Still worth a look, for Super Hang On fans at the least. Okay, this is what you've been waiting for, I presume. Slipstream, released on the 21st of May this year, and offering a look akin to games like Full Throttle and Lotus Turbo Challenge. It's a good look, and indeed, it's a good game for the most part. After choosing our four-wheeled powerhouse, offering various familiar looking takes on 80s classics such as this Lancia or Toyota Supra, we get to speed through various cityscapes and backgrounds reeking of 80s finesse. But rather than the usual controls, this time we have the added advantage of drift. This is an essential element to gameplay, as we blast through level after level trying to beat our rival opponent. It's not essential to beat your rival, but it's a good marker and ensures you don't run out of time before getting to the Outrun-esque fork and choosing a direction. We've got various modes such as Arcade, Quick Race and Grand Prix, with Grand Prix offering a number of cups, difficulty levels, car upgrades and of course opponents. There's enough here to keep you satisfied for a good while, but it does have a couple of negatives for me. The first being the lack of split screen mode, something which made games like Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 an absolute joy. But that can be forgiven. What I find slightly harder to forgive is the finicky drift controls, especially given its importance. Whereas games like Outrun Arcade mastered this to perfection, here it sometimes doesn't seem to recognise the drift action. What's more, when you wing the car in the opposite direction, rather than fluidly drifting in that direction, you have to re-instigate the drift, and it's all a bit of a faff. There's a lot to offer here, it's a decent game, but it's not as enjoyable as perhaps I'd hoped. Which brings me on to Horizon Chase Turbo, the desktop version of that addictive mobile game. Thankfully it's not a straight mobile port either, they've truly made this into a sensational desktop experience. Although it doesn't share the same pixelated nostalgic graphics of Slipstream, it's clear that this is very much rooted in Outrun lore, and what's better, it's just as playable. Of all the games here, Horizon Chase is by far the easiest to pick up and get stuck into. It's enjoyable from the go, and although there's no drift action per se, the effortless grace your car moves around even the tightest bends is sure to keep you engaged. The controls are incredibly responsive, allowing you to weave through traffic and slap a smile on your face. If you don't, then you get knocked back, but because the controls are so tight, rather than being annoying, this time it actually gives you the incentive to weave and engage in the game. Crashing is quite rare, but if you do crash, then you get put back on the road quickly, alleviating frustration. And once you've had enough of the various one-player modes, there's a local multiplayer for up to four people, which is tremendous. The price tag is slightly higher, but for the wealth of content and gameplay, Horizon Chase is the one to pick. 
Thanks for watching this video on 80s aesthetic racers. There's some other things you can do here. Watch another video, Patreon, subscribe, thumbs up or thumbs down, or leave. In any case, I hope you have a great evening.